So what's your everyday drive? Oh my God, if I, if I, if I miss the light, it'll triple my commute to three minutes. <laughs> And what, what's your vehicle of choice? Well, I'm driving a Subaru. My day, I, I, I don't really drive too much that day. Nowadays, I have a driver with a, I stretched a Subaru Tribeca. But, when I, but my daily drive is a Subaru. I do have a, a Ferrari. I'm, I'm getting the new Bentley that's coming out, trading in my old Bentley. You know, I, I like the big, like that car is beautiful, but I mean, they, they're too small. I like a nice big four door. Are you getting the Bentley convertible or the... Uh, no, the uh, four-door, four the, the Flying Spur. I got the Mulsanne, the brand new Mulsanne yes. that just came out. Beautiful. I bought that. And then I had bought the four-door in 06 when it came out. And I'm going to trade my 06 for, for a new one. I met with my designer yesterday who's going to design the car because you can't, you know, it takes, it takes finesse to do that. You can't... Yeah. You got to pick leathers. You got to pick stitching. You got to pick. I mean, it's like you need an interior designer to pick a car. And you can tell the guys <laughs> they did it themselves. Oh really? Oh sure. Oh yeah. You funny. can tell the guys because you look at these cars. They spent two, three hundred thousand dollars on them. And you go, holy shit, that looks like crap. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, and then what I think a nice a nice byproduct of this is in '06 he's helped me. My designer has done all my houses, my jets, my cars, everything, and I think he's going to buy it, my old one. And he had designed it, so he <laughs> loves it. It's perfect. It's perfect, yeah. That's perfect. As you, have you always had a passion for cars, or is it because you grew up in the business with your, with no, your dad? No, I never really, I never really had a passion. I never really discovered these types of cars until very late in life. Um, when I was growing up, it was the Firebirds, the Vets, the Camaros, the Chargers. Yep. You know, the, the domestics, sure. you know, I never really, and then maybe a little bit of a Porsche. I never really, and then it wasn't until later in life that I appreciated the Bentleys and the Ferraris and the Maseratis. I mean, this is a very, this is an anomaly in, in my, my business, this store. How long have you had this store? I think 05 I bought it, I think. So going the path down you're going, what made you go from the, the Toyotas and the Hondas well, and kind see, of the singles it. and doubles to we, this, this we, is a we, big jump. The, the whole, if you were to size up the company, it's a it's, uh, you know, little amount of stores, high volume. That's, what, that's, that's how I grew up. Yep. That's how I think. That's, that's just what I've always done. It's really the only thing I know. Right. And then when this came, when this came up, this came up, this, it's kind of a funny story how I bought this. A friend of mine works for Chambers uh, at the Bentley place, Paul Downing, who's a, who I consider a good friend. And when the Ford Bentley came out, I wanted to buy it. So I said, hey, Paul, you know, tell me about it. So I went down, and I went down, and he's showing me the cars, and he's showing me all this stuff. He goes, I heard the Ferrari store in Newton is for sale. I said, whoa, that's interesting. He said, yeah, yeah, it's for sale. So I, so I hurried up, went back to the office, and I, I started making phone calls, trying to find out who the hell is it, trying to get a hold of the guy. The guy, was a, the guy that owned it was, a, was, owned, it was an Italian guy who used to <coughs> bone Ivanka Trump, you know, <laughs> yes. um, wineries, yes. you know, just a playboy. If you saw a picture of him, he's a real Italian playboy. Sure, I mean, sure. you know, handsome guy. Yeah. And I could never get a hold of him, so I called Ferrari and I said, hey, this is Ernie Bach, I'm here in Boston. I hear that the Ferrari, well, we can't help you. And, and, I, and I just called and called and called and called and called. And, and finally, Ferrari said, listen, we'll give you the name of the lawyer. So I called the lawyer that was handling the transaction. I said, I said, this is Ernie Bach, I hear the Ferrari franchise is for sale. He said, I just got a P&S on it, purchase and sale, yep. it's sold. I said, whoa. I said, what did, they, what did they buy it for? And he told me the number. I said, I'd give you a million dollars more. And the guy goes, I can't, I can't. I said, two million. He says, I'll call you back. <laughs> so, he, so he called me back. He says, you got the deal. Oh, wow. So I said, send me the paperwork. So he sends me the paperwork. I'm filling out the paperwork. I'm doing everything. I got a question. I call him back. He says, we can't do it. We can't, he, we just can't sell it to you. It's not the money. The owner committed to this guy. We can't sell it to you. I said, I'll give you three million more. He said, it's not that, it, I, I, we can't do it. I said, all right, if anything changes, let me know. 
six, eight months go by, I go back to pick up my Bentley. Mm -hmm. I, Paul, I'm with Paul Downing, and Paul Downing goes, I heard the Ferrari deal fell through. And I go, oh. what? So I run back, I run back, and I call him up and go, well, I heard the deal fell through. He goes, yeah, the deal did fall through. I said, I said well, what are we going to do? He goes, well, you offered. I go, forget that. Right, right, right. Forget that. Yeah, right, right. Takes free that. off the table. I said, exactly. I'll, I'll give you this. And then we negotiated, and we decided on a price. And I got the paperwork. But that is only the beginning. Oh, my. Then you have to be approved by sure. Ferrari, of course, sure. which is a major, major, major thing. There's only 200 Ferrari dealers worldwide. Oh, wow. Only 200. And there's 46 in North America, in Canada, North America, Central America, and South America. It's a, it's a very, very small club.